What about the argument that they're blowing hundreds of billions of dollars on Ukraine? They're sending money wherever they want it. Green energy uh, deal here that they've got uh, in, the, in the last bill that was passed. Billions of dollars on that. Can't the government, or in a, a more simple sense, the people, can't the country afford to do this? So what's the argument there. What if somebody was to say to you, well, America has all this money anyways, it's going to blow it in Ukraine or blow it on, you know, windmills. Why can't we just, you know, relieve a little bit of the debt for the young people of America? I would actually uh, be inclined to agree with that argument in the way that it's framed. I would only push back in the sense that, you know, it's not really at its at its core an argument about like where money is going to go necessarily because it's all being totally blown. What's more interesting is the conversation as why it's being blown. And all those instances that you named were all examples of the current regime rewarding its friends. And like you said, you know, with the American taxpayer having to foot the bill, punishing the enemies. I mean, the punish uh, the, the enemies of the American system are fundamentally its taxpayers. And I mean by that, the people who are paying, frankly, more into the system than they are taking out of it. And a lot of the people who are going to have their debt forgiven can't exactly fall into that category. And so, yeah, money is being blown. We can't afford it in the sense that like it's being blown Ways. Can we afford it as a country? Is in is this? I don't think so. But yeah, it's all going to be blown anyways, and it's being blown on things like Ukraine, where only thirty percent of that money is actually going towards its destination. It's being blown by forgiving, you know, the the debt of like upper middle class Americans and things like that. I think what's a more uh, precise attack on the whole idea in the first place would be to attack the system of college, not to say that it's overpriced, which it is, because a lot of conservatives want to go after, you know, the way that the government incentivizes these colleges to inflate their prices by, you know, guaranteeing the debt or whatever. Uh, and it's also not to say, you know, that college in itself is a bad idea because we should be encouraging kids to go into skilled trades or whatever. It's the idea that college exists for everybody. Having a university degree is no longer an impressive statement. It is quite literally the same as getting a driver's license in the sense that if you show up, pay the fee, and present all of the necessary paperwork, eventually they will give you one. If you look at the average IQ of somebody who held a graduate degree, even as recently as like 30 years ago, it is a whole standard deviation, and probably even more than that, I think, higher than what you would have now. And this makes a lot of people uncomfortable because they don't like the idea that intelligence is uh, genetic. They don't like the idea that you can't really just work harder and then achieve anything that you want. Because in a sense, that was the American dream, right? If you work hard, you'll be able to achieve anything you want. That was possible with the class of people that we had 100, 150 years ago. But when you import the third world, the American dream isn't going to really exist in that capacity anymore for a lot of reasons. But so people aren't really comfortable with the fact that college ads that exist now is a way of trying to basically purchase your way out of mediocrity. The same way that, you know, people always say about Catholics, oh, you know, they sold indulgences to try to purchase their way out of damnation. It's the same thing where you have people who are totally unexceptional, totally average, thinking that they can go purchase a degree and all of a sudden they're credentialed and they're experts and they're better than someone like myself who is a genius who maybe doesn't have that credential to his name uh but it's just not the case and so i think that there's something that really needs to be addressed there with how we deal with those types of people because now what we've done is we've cheapened the value of a college degree you know it was made illegal for example because the greatest predictor of job performance is iq and so uh, the college, because they made that illegal, they made it illegal to test for IQ and job applications because that's racist or something. And so then college admissions were sort of used as a proxy for that. But then they started uh, eliminating the standardized testing that was a proxy for the IQ test in getting admission to these colleges. And then you're introducing affirmative action. So now the value of a college degree, <clears throat> even from the most elite institutions, has less practical value than it would have a few decades ago. And so I think that we're going to see the general... Uh, uh, effectiveness of all of our institutions that these students are flooding into diminish more so than we have already. I think that the value of a college degree in general is going to be, you know, less than it already is already. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think that the whole I, the whole thing is basically a scam to funnel money away from normal Americans into the pockets of uh, the elites.